Before we get into what happened in Kenmore, Washington a few weeks ago, let me give you a quick update here on the channel. I leave for Indianapolis tomorrow. I was given free tickets to the national championship game. And even though I'm not as into college football as I was when I was growing up, I couldn't turn down free tickets to a championship game. Plus, I like the city of Indianapolis. It's a fun city. I'm going to try to get something up tomorrow before I leave, but after that, there won't be another video for a few days. I should be home early Wednesday, barring any flight cancellations or weather delays, and I hope to be back then. Also, the Patreon link that I keep forgetting about is in the description below. If any of you guys want to contribute, click the link below. It'll take you to the Patreon page. Always optional, always optional, but I appreciate those of you that have contributed so far. All right. Let's get into it. What is the best way to predict the future? You look to the past. What is the best way to predict the future of a child? You look to his parents. Of course, there are always exceptions to this. Some children would be better off raised by animals than the parents they were given. But they end up turning into functional adults, some. Some even become great parents themselves. They use their childhood as motivation instead of wallowing in sympathy their entire life. In most cases, though, children will grow up to emulate their parents. Your childhood forms patterns that follow you into adulthood. If your parents are hardworking, good people, you're likely to grow up to be the same. If your parents are alcoholics, you are 50% more likely to become an alcoholic yourself. If you grow up in a violent home, you are more likely to become a domestic abuser. Consequently, young girls who grow up in violent homes are more likely to become victims of domestic violence. It's baffling when you think about it. The average life expectancy here in America is 79 years. Of those 79 years, the first 10 to 15 will impact you for the rest of your life. You can make the case childhood development is the most important part of anyone's life. Mark McLaughlin is a former college basketball player and current menace to society. He's 31 years old. He was a stud at Central Washington, but prior to that, he attended nine different schools in six years. Nine schools in six years. That has got to be some kind of record. This was before the days where college athletes could just transfer freely. Mark McLaughlin wasn't transferring to better basketball programs. He was consistently getting kicked out of school. He spent four months at the University of Washington. The Huskies ended up kicking him out after he caused an on-court altercation with a teammate in which punches were thrown. That happened over 10 years ago. I go back to the original statement. The best way to predict the future, look to the past. You'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. 31-year-old Mark McLaughlin. He has a son at Kenmore Middle School. His son is following in his father's footsteps in more ways than one. For one, he's a basketball player. That's a positive attribute that he picked up from his father, one of very few. Number two, not so good. Because Mark McLaughlin's son is doing what young boys tend to do, emulate the behavior of their father. An on-court altercation took place during a basketball game at Kenmore Middle School back in December. From what I can tell, the game was ending, or maybe the quarter was ending, when all this took place. You're going to see Mark McLaughlin's son in a white jersey shove a kid in a green jersey several seconds after the buzzer sounds. A player from the opposing team, he comes to the defense of his teammate, naturally. The referees, they step in, de-escalate the situation. Now, these are middle school kids. These are not NBA players. So these referees, they had no problem keeping this situation under control between the kids. Now, during this altercation, a 72-year-old referee was separating the players. He ends up running and grabbing Mark McLaughlin's son. He's unable to stop his momentum, so when he grabs the kid, they fall to the ground. The 72-year-old referee, after it happens, he lends his hand to help the kid up. That should be the end of the story. Unfortunately, it's not. Mark McLaughlin is 6'6", 215 pounds. He is a big dude. 
what the hell is he doing beating up on a 72-year-old man? Well, let's look to the past. Mark McLaughlin has a history of violence. I told you about the situation that happened during his college days. Back in 2014, he was charged with domestic violence. Now, I couldn't find any information on the case. It appears to have been deferred, which means his wife or his girlfriend was likely too scared to pursue the case. The referee that he shoved suffered a broken nose, broken cheekbone, and he bled for 90 seconds. His nose bled for 90 seconds. Now, just imagine, just imagine some bulldozer running into your 70-year-old dad or your 70-year-old grandfather. This man's giving his time to officiate this game between these kids, and he has to deal with this bullshit, not from the kids, but from the parents. We are seeing this happen with more and more frequency. Why do you think that is? Why are we seeing more violence at sporting events, specifically youth sporting events? Because people know they can get away with it. Think about where this happened, Seattle. Kenmore is about 15 miles outside from Seattle. What is one of the things that Seattle's become known for? Coddling criminals, cashless bail, putting criminals back on the street, defunding the police, that disgusting Chaz zone. Seattle used to be one of the most beautiful cities in the country. Now, it's a shining example of what happens when you embrace social justice. More than likely, Mark McLaughlin will spend no time in prison for this. They'll probably give him a slap on the wrist, send him on his way. But that's not really the concern here. No one gives a shit about Mark McLaughlin. I mean, he should spend five to 10 years in prison, but there's something bigger at play here. What about his son? Mark McLaughlin has demonstrated on more than one occasion that he is not fit to be a father. He's raising a young kid that will grow up to emulate his dad. Now, I don't know the familial background of Mark McLaughlin, but if I had to guess, he grew up in an abusive home with his father abusing his mother or his father abusing him or both. He is passing that legacy down to his son. Witnesses reported as Mark McLaughlin was making his way out of the stands to attack an innocent 72-year-old man, he screamed, no one touches my son. Hmm, that's ironic, since your son started the altercation to begin with. I guarantee you, Mark McLaughlin praised his kid for throwing that cheap shot. This middle school kid didn't just wake up one morning and decide to be an asshole. Violence is learned behavior. He sees this shit at home. Now, if convicted, Mark McLaughlin could spend 10 years in prison. But what good is the threat of prison time if it's never enforced? These judges and politicians, they spend more time and more money keeping people out of prison than putting their asses in there. All right, let me know what you guys think. You think Mark McLaughlin spends one day in jail. Should he lose custody of his kid? Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.